Hello everybody, welcome to Making Monday. Um, I'm your host, Brian Locke, and uh, how's it going? Uh, yeah, so... Michael is asking, how was Maker Faire? Uh, so, it wasn't an official Maker Faire, and I have no idea why. Uh, I'm actually quite curious about that. Um, sorry if the fan's too loud, but it's warm and uh, my uh, temperature is more important than whatever whatever audible noise that's making to you, so apologies. Um, yeah, because there was a Dublin Maker Fair in a mini Maker Fair in like 2015, and the guy who runs this Dublin Maker... Ah, so that's why... Yes, that would explain it. Because, yeah, the guy who runs this Maker Fair, Dublin Maker, uh, was the guy who ran the Dublin Mini Maker Fair. So, that is obviously why. That's interesting. I would have thought that uh, it would be in Maker Fair's interest to have multiples all over the place because it increases their brand. I wouldn't have even thought that you'd have to pay them. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, that answers that question. Thank you, Dave Darko. Um, or just Dave. Uh, it was good. Uh, great to see so many people who are interested in this kind of area. Because, like, in my general... Uh, in my general, um, like, just talking to people... I've met very few people who are interested in this sort of stuff. Now, to be honest, the thing is mostly aimed towards kids, I would say, but uh, I did get to talk to a few people who uh, were building some cool stuff, and uh, I even learnt some things. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, like, I learned how to Charlieplex, which I had never done before. I heard people keep going, oh yeah, I got loads of these working, you know, I Charlieplex them, and I'm like, that's something I should learn or look into at some stage. And it's quite simple, which was good. But that, uh, I tweeted out, like, the display they had for, like, describing it. And it was it was just perfect. Like, it was, it was such a good explanation. Um, so that was good. Uh, yeah, I got burnt. I don't know if you can, you can surely tell that that part of my face is way more red than that part. Even though it wasn't overly sunny, it was overcast, but I just got burnt through the clouds, I guess. I'm, uh, as you can tell, I'm pretty pale in complexion, so uh, I burn easily. So that was that. Uh, what else was there? Then we went to Ikea after that, and I bought some stuff. So I'm an Irish redneck now, yeah. <laughs> I am from out the country and everything. Hey, Dave, thanks for the sub. Four months in a row. Thank you. Hey, Subtix. How's it going? You're not too late at all. I thought it was longer than that, but uh, I appreciate the four months anyways. Thank you. Um, yeah, so then we went to Ikea after that. Uh, was pretty... Didn't get too much stuff. We kind of set ourselves like a limit and uh, fairly well stuck to it. I bought one thing that was pretty makery related it's too far away for me to get it um but uh it's just like a blind that was like kind of this mesh uh sort of this meshy texture it's gonna be good for diffusing leds i just know it uh i was inspired by becky's uh thing uh twitch prime doesn't have a time limit it, you have to sub every month and what that just means, the Dave Darko four months thing, is that he has subbed four months in a row. Um, so, like, I presume that's to, like, discourage people who have Amazon Prime. Uh, Amazon Prime, like, say, if I had friends who have Amazon Prime, but I don't have any friends. No, that's not true. I have some friends who have <laughs> Amazon Prime. And, like, you know, rather than just getting them to sign up to sub to me once, even though they never use Twitch, and then I get, like, money from them in, you know, going forward, I think it's just to discourage that. 
Hey, Mike. I, I got to meet Mike at Maker uh, Maker Dublin as well, which was great. Um, yeah, hopefully your kids enjoyed uh, Maker Dublin. Uh, yeah. I, I know that I never was asked how long. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how it works. I, I don't use a huge amount, but um, yeah, you just need to... Well, sorry, you don't need to do anything. If you like to, you can subscribe every month. But uh, yeah, so that was grand. Went to Ikea after that. Was just so exhausted by the end of the day and had some stuff to assemble. Uh, I put up a shelf in my room there. You can see it above the. You can see it above the um, window. Um, that was one of the things I got up there. Uh, and then on Sunday, or write them a browser plugin. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> we asked, was asked all the way home about the YouTuber I met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. <laughs> hey, DigiKey, how's it? Or DigiCool, DigiKey, DigiCool things. Uh, yeah, that's that's an unusual business model, isn't it? That um, like there is resellers of IKEA stuff, like just yeah, like it's the same here in well here meaning Ireland and the UK. Like you can buy IKEA stuff on Amazon. Dakota UK, even though there's loads of IKEAs in here um but i guess it's just you know like say for me the closest one's an hour and a half away so it's an hour and a half return journey and then you might buy everything in the shop so maybe it's a better idea to uh not go there if you're just looking for a couple of things then before we get started into stuff the other thing that i was looking at on sunday so i've been 3d printing a little bit um just trying to get my uh, my uh, older 3D printer up and running again because I'll probably sell it um, when my wife's one arrives. Um, but you know, I want to not be selling people lemons or anything. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so one of the things that I was trying to print was I have this light pipe stuff which is I bought it, I, I don't know if you can buy it individually I think you might be able to but it's more expensive I bought it as like a light up shoelace which is this thing um, I took the battery out already but uh, yeah Oops, I put it in wrong. Not that it is overly important that this lights up or anything. Maybe that battery's dead, or maybe I put it in the wrong way. Doesn't matter. Uh, it just lights up to green LEDs either direction. And then it had this uh, light pipe stuff, which is... They were calling it shoelaces or something. Uh, the tube thing went both directions, so you would have to uh, put the put the light pipe in in either side, and there was LEDs coming out both sides. Um, yeah, I don't know why that didn't uh, light up. I'm surely meant to put it in that way. Oh, it's a it's the wrong battery. Uh, I would probably explain it. And where the correct battery is, I'm not 100% sure, so you'll just have to trust me. Oh, there it is. Uh, this is high quality entertainment. Hey, Colin, how's it going? Um, yeah, so yeah, lights up. Uh, it's actually quite good, uh, I have to say. Like, it mightn't be showing up too well there, but, like, this clearly is lit up green in in person. You can see it on camera. It's not 
it's not as dark as this. Um, oh yes, Mike, I saw on Twitter you were doing that. Um, so like it, it does work quite good. You can see it there with the flash. You can clearly see a difference between when it's on and not on. So uh, yeah, kind of interesting. Um, so the reason I got that was because if you ever seen my LED map project, the NeoPixel traffic display thing, somebody was saying like, oh, it'd be better if it like lit up the entire route rather than just having like LEDs. And they're saying maybe use something like a EL wire or that's not EL wire. Is it EL wire? Yeah, EL wire. Um, to light it up and I was like oh yeah, that might be an idea and then I came across this light pipe stuff and I was like oh maybe that would work and I've never actually tried it but uh, so I printed off these things that uh, fit the LED or the light pipe into it and fit an LED in the other side here is a more recent revision that's uh, pretty decent um, it's quite big because my printer was kind of struggling to print uh, to print smaller ones, uh, there's a lot of under extrusion, so uh, yeah, this one is much better. Um, yeah, so the light pipe goes in one side, LED goes in the other. I might have made the holes a bit too big for the light pipe, but uh, yeah, yeah, get the point. Um, so here's one I made earlier, and uh, it actually looks quite good, I think. So again, it's not showing up the best for ye here. You can kind of see it a bit better there when I darken it up, but like that's, it's very visibly orange in my screen, um, or my screen in real life. Um, yeah, and one thing that I thought was quite interesting as well is that if I turn this potentiometer too far, the light clearly goes from orange to, uh, to, um, red. Oh, there we go. So it's orange, it's orange, it's orange, and I don't know what's happening anymore, because I can't really see it too well with the... I might have blown the LED anyways. But anyways, so that works quite good. So uh, yeah, I'll probably do something with that at some stage. Um, they're just standard, um, they're standard orange LEDs at the moment. I'll probably use true hole NeoPixels or something. But uh, yeah, so 3D printing a good bit at the moment. Lots of trial and error, doing loads of things wrong. Trying to figure it out. But that's cool. So, I want to build an LED light controller. Um, and this is one of the things that's on the list, sort of. Um, you know, we were talking about only working on stuff from the list. One of the things on the list is grow light. And this thing is running the grow light at the moment. Well, not at the moment because it's right here. Um, so, uh, yeah, we. I want to replace this with a uh, uh, board. So you might remember I tried to do this on a stream before and I got a little bit kind of kerfuffled halfway through it. Um, so we're going to try again. Um, and this time we're going to do it right. So uh, it's a pretty simple circuit despite the wiring mess. Um, I think just jumper wires make everything look worse because you know they're coming up so much. Um, hey, uh, how do I pronounce that? MTL Sync. How's it going? Um, yeah, I wonder can you use some... yeah I'd say you could use some uh, 3D filament. Maybe not as light pipe because uh, it really does bounce along the thing very well. It's like, uh, if I show you this thing again, if I have the battery. Like, so this is me plugging in one side. 
and so it's quite long maybe 70 or 80 centimeters like you can clearly see the light coming out of it like the far side like it's even it even draws pretty bad marks but like it no it's not hollow it's it's like the texture of like a glue stick or something that's you can I, I don't know if you can see you can see yeah no it's definitely not hollow um so i don't know how uh how metal snake ah yes that makes sense uh yeah so the jumper wires always make things look super messy um so uh yeah let's put it on a little board and it'll be much nicer so it, it's relatively straightforward so we're going to plug in 12 volts in here um and the 12 volt from an arduino perspective the 12 volts is connected to this step down converter uh which converts it down to 5 volts which we plug into the which we plug into the arduino into the 5 volt pin uh, the Arduino has a voltage regulator to put it down to 3.3 volts. That is not a mistake by me. It's a choice because um, people say that these uh, buck converters are pretty noisy and the regulator should clean it up a bit. Um, so hopefully that works out. Um, ah, that's a good idea from clear bathroom silicone too. Uh, my family business, well like not my family business, but my dad's business is uh, uh, like a tile shop. So I should, there should be some spare clear bathroom silicone floating around. I must try that out. Thanks for the suggestion, Gavin. And uh, hey Leo, how's it going? Um, yeah, so uh, converter down to 5.5, which uh, gets um, voltage regulated to the 3.3 volt ESP. There is a rotary encoder to adjust the brightness of the LED strip, um, which I'll get to now in a second. Uh, and the button on the rotary encoder turns it uh, turns it on and off. Um, and then we have a MOSFET. Uh, it is a uh, IRL B8721. Um, so that's that's um, that is switching the low side of what goes to the um, sorry, maybe this one what goes to the LED strip. So the the input from the input from your power supply, the positive goes straight to the positive of this and the negative is switched by that MOSFET. So we can use that to um, to do PWM or just turn it on and off or do whatever we need to do. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm good. It's not Leo. I'm burnt on my face, if you can't tell. It's there. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm also burnt on my nose, but I kind of look to the side all the time so you can't see that. Uh, can you see that? Um, yeah, so that's fine. <laughs> um, it's a lot of glue is lost from the side. Yeah. Um, now the light pipe stuff was cheap enough anyways. So I would like to make this a board at some stage. Um, there is other ESP8266 boards like this, but this one would be my one. So that'd be fine. Um, I was getting down some of the pieces. So the the more important components from this is, uh, yeah, we already talked about the MOSFET, the rotary encoder. This is a small step down, so I'm going to try that one out and see does it work. Hopefully it works okay. Um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I've actually never used it, so maybe the first thing to try would be to try that out and see does it work okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think it would be nice to have a board like this. Um, so I, I guess as well, like if you wanted to make it a board to sell, 
it might be a good idea to put in three MOSFETs um, for the sole reason that like you could have it three you know an RGB um, an RGB LED strip uh, if you can fit it pin wise it might even be best to put in four MOSFETs or at least design your board to have four MOSFETs it doesn't necessarily need to use four MOSFETs like as in if somebody wants to populate the board to only power one that's fine you only need one MOSFET but if you want to do RGB or RGBWs then uh, yeah you would do the other I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit everything uh, on the board if like is in on this perf board so I might just stick to just the one um, for now even I remember struggling to fit this on a little bit but uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have picked up a few tricks along the way or whatever that uh, will work out for us so I uh, forgot the ESP <laughs> one second soldering one um, I have a cap there as well whatever that is that is 220 not even sure if that's needed but sure we'll take it anyways um, and I I think that's everything. I'm gonna need some. Um, I've never actually wired up a, a rotary encoder without um, the board, so I'm gonna need to figure out how that's wired into. I also might have a problem fitting that in. Huh. Maybe I'll just use one with a board for now. Uh, I could bend it off to the side. These legs are kind of, oops, uh, the side legs are kind of in the way. I guess I could just bend it off to the side or bend them under. I don't know, I'll just bend them under. Uh, no, I have not gotten around to fixing that yet. It's on, it's on my to-do list. Um... I will get to it at some stage. I'm scared. I have a backlog of s projects and bits and pieces that uh, I really do need to get to, but uh, I'm just trying to clear off some of the ones that are already on my plate. Um, okay, so let's put this one down here. So I'm using screw terminals, even though I probably won't use screw terminals for the outside um, let's say for example the connector to plug into the light strip I'll probably use uh, these guys I was looking at uh, Sion's uh, mailbag video he uh, um, he just got a bunch of these or whatever so yeah I was thinking you know maybe just have like a hole in whatever case I'm gonna have I'm, I'm not even too worried about having a case at the moment um, so yeah put this through the hole and then this into the screw holes and then I'm good to go from that side of things um, so I haven't made a video on the grow lights yet but they're basically um, they're basically an LED strip cut up, like they're just the standard like 12 volts positive one side, ground the other side, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, I showed them on a post bag video, like a grow, the, the green, or sorry, the red and blue LEDs, so yeah, I cut them up into like strips and made a wooden enclosure, 
that's another thing I need to make a video of, but uh, this will help with that a bit. It's a bit of a cop out even doing this one, but anyways, it's fine. Um, so what the rotary encoder was plugged into all the top pins, so I guess it'll be over this side if we're. Yeah, you see, the other thing about it is if I put the rotary encoder this way, then it needs to come out through the. Uh, let me just grab a box. Using one of those yellow DC jacks for a project. What's a yellow DC jack? Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I actually went to get some of them at some stage, but I never did. Um, I bought some uh, two. Po Ooh, I'm dropping frames and we're back. Okay. Uh, is that a hard non flat breadboard? Uh, yeah, probably is uh actually doesn't look too bad but this uh this project's been on a breadboard for a long time so uh yeah uh i'm gonna give you a sneak peek to reward you for being here but i got this in the post today well not today but i opened it in my post bag today uh it's uh mb102 uh it's good it's good. It's a little bit tough. Well, maybe it was just the other board was crap. Yeah, no, maybe it's the other board is bad. Um, yeah, you can see there it was easy to put in, easy to take out. Like, inspecting it, it, it looks fine. So, these are probably a winner. I think there were, a, I can't remember how much it was, 250 maybe? Hey, hey, Michael, or Hassider, thank you for the sub. Um hmm even with this I guess when I put my uh when I put my thing up on stilts I could put the I could put the uh the voltage um the converter underneath it and then he'd be nice and cozy in there I think that might work out just fine yeah, that could do me. Uh, okay, so he's going underneath the ESP. I think I might just need to use a uh, uh, rotary encoder board rather than this thing, just from getting it done in a stream sick. Uh, yeah, he'll be fine down there somewhere. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I guess the other thing is that I could put the ESP on its side like this. That doesn't really help with anything. I think up here is fine. The other thing as well is that I now have a 3D printer back in operation so uh i wouldn't worry about it um i wouldn't worry about it uh michael um i'll uh, i'll definitely get by but uh appreciate you subbing now and before and any other time that you do um but definitely don't uh don't worry about it uh i got it just from um i got it just from aliexpress somewhere I, I can't remember where i'll uh that that post bag video will be out in like a day or two um so keep an eye out for it i guess uh yeah 
do 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 See where we're putting this stuff. Do I want to put it that way? Maybe. I'll probably put it way off to the side as well. Not that much to the side because it's covering a screw hole. That should be pretty good. Put my MOSFET down here. I don't know if I like my MOSFET being taller than my uh, taller than my board. I guess I can just bend it that way now. Uh, um, okay, so that's cool. Put the voltage inverter. Sneak him under there. Be our little secret. Even have a board that I've already desoldered, but I don't have the piece of. Hmm. It's not. Uh, it's not cleaned out, but we'll do that. <laughs> Nobody believes that you have a Windows phone. Nobody be that crazy. Um. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I think. I think we shouldn't be too bad there. Ooh, um, and a bit of sp and a spot of butter with this. It's just a little bit sticking out over the edge. It's probably not the end of the world. I also don't have anywhere to put the wires if I put it like this. Uh, maybe it is better to. Put this this way. Let's see. I can move these out to the side. Do 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 do. Okay. Still kind of has the same problem. Maybe it's just too small to use that one. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, it's a bit of fun. Maybe. Let's use the crappy board. It's a uh, large and crappy, but it'll do the job. Yeah, now that I have a 3D printer back in operation, I can make the board and then uh, 3D print a case around whatever I make. So uh, hopefully that works out okay. I can put these in a little. It or this one in a bit because it'll probably end up being connected to uh, this. Um, yeah, I'm looking to buy a cheap Chinese phone at the moment. Um, if anyone has any recommendations, I was looking at the Redmi, uh, the Redmi. Note 4, Note 5, whatever it's called, and uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, I would have bought it by now if it had, uh, I would have bought it by now if it had a uh, um, USB Type C connector. I'm pretty attached to my USB Type C, but it only has a mini, which uh, is not the best. Or micro, sorry, but still, you get my uh, I get my problem. So this is a better fit, anyways. You can still put um, still put this underneath. Swap that around. Um, the 
let's do put this underneath um, and everything else is fitting pretty good we can put our MOSFET here all good yeah yeah exactly Hassider. Um so we'll see how that goes uh, okay so let me mark this I'm pretty happy with the board being there, but I'd imagine it's going to be easier for me to solder down the solder down the um, the book converter first. Okay, cool. It's marked. Um, I posted once last week, and I I've posted since that. Uh, definitely, because I remember thinking, ah. Uh, Sure, the last thing we worked on was the Twitch thing, and I posted about that, so that was within the last week. So I have some time to post another uh, blog post. Uh, I have kept my promises. Um, I actually have the next vlog that I'm working on as well. Uh, uh, well, I know what I'm gonna do. Let's let's try this out because I've never tried it before, so that might be kind of important. Um, let me get my multimeter. Uh, do you see it there? I, I definitely posted on it since then. Um, yeah, ah, I was I was getting worried. I was like, oh crap, did I not uh, not keep it up? I was like, no, I did. Uh, okay, that's not gonna work. So let's uh, let's grab my crack wires. Hope that we can make an okay connection to this. Mm, uh, that's a connection. But it's an okay one or not, I don't know. It's gotta be quiet. That feedly. I don't know, maybe it didn't update the RSS. I presume it does. Hey, Bard X. Uh, we have a ESP8266, which is an Arduino with uh, Wi Fi built into it, LED controller. So I didn't really. I, not that I didn't really build it on the stream, I definitely didn't build it on the stream. Uh, I built it on a previous stream and now I just want to transfer it onto a PCB because as you can see it's an absolute mess of wires. Um, yeah. What did you use for your uh, blog digi cool things? Um, I like Ghost. Uh, I thought it worked pretty well. Uh, other than it's not updating subtexts feedly. Uh, but other than that, pretty happy with it. Um, I don't know if I have a 12 volt charger here. Sure, where my twelve volt charger is. I have one in my light. <laughs>
this will do. Hey, Tachi, thanks for the follow. This wasn't what I was looking for, but it is a 12 volt charger, so uh, it'll do me. And it is center positive, which is good. Uh, let's see, power connector. Mm, better power connector. So he is my negative, he's my positive. Hopefully they won't touch off each other. My god, hey, unexpected maker, did you move? I thought Twitch hated Australia. Uh, let's hope for no sparks or smoke. I don't know where to position my uh, multimeter so that you can see it there. That's not too bad. Uh. <laughs> hey, David Watts, how's it going? Uh, welcome. The RSS did update. Okay, that's good. Oh no, maybe this isn't the right size, is it? Fit in. I'm not getting any uh, voltage out of it. I might need to make a better connection than this. Because it's not working. Uh, I have a couple of these, so I might just sacrifice one to the. Uh, just might put pin headers on it if it'll fit in a breadboard of some description. How way would I do it? I guess yeah. If I put pin headers on it like that, wouldn't it be uh, good? Um, Sorry to hear about your dad. Did you cool things, or at least I hope he's okay? Uh, yeah, this will do me. Okay, where is my snips? It is a mess, David J. Watts. Um, it is a big mess. Did you get uh, your IKEA problem sorted? So I'm just cutting oops, off camera apparently. Uh, pin headers here. I'm gonna use the spreadboard that, according to post bags, I don't have yet. So this is the out portion. <laughs> Feedly is just like, hey, now that I know you're interested in that, here's everything that guy has. How many pins is between that? Because I'm struggling to get this to fit in. I think that's wrong, anyways. Yep. Oh, maybe it's a weird spacing, is it? Yep. It is a weird spacing. So I'm going to go down to single pins. It's still not going to help though, right? Do you ever hear the saying, shaving yaks? That is what we're doing at the moment. Uh, 
Maybe maybe it was okay actually if I went this way. Using the gap. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad that way actually. Um we're building a ESP A266 based LED controller. I thought that would be obvious. Oh, crap, I cut <laughs> I cut two when I didn't need to. Uh yeah. As it works okay this way. Uh you see no potentiometers. You see a uh, rotary encoder. Um yeah, so it's it's just a device for controlling um LED strips or any any PWM based uh things. Uh so it has uh it can have a web interface or use alexa to turn it off and on and stuff like that but then also it has the rotary encoder to do it uh manually um yes Bilo is now my my name uh okay yeah that it's not the greatest fit it's a little bit bent but uh it's fine it'll do um I need to clean up my desk a bit to uh, use my soldering iron. Uh, yeah, so it has the DC to DC converter to it to um, to uh, to step down the twelve volt supply for the LEDs or any input um, down to the five volts. Well, and then the voltage regulator converts it down to the 3.3 .3 volts for the ESP um, so it'll <laughs> move up please apologies um, so uh, there was a trade on reddit there a few days ago that um, was like people talking about their um, favorite electronics youtubers and the guy who posted the thread was uh mentioned me which was amazing but uh somebody in the comments then was like oh yeah i'm a, i'm a fan of Belo too and the original guy was like who's Belo?" and he was like it's brian locks you already mentioned him <laughs> i was like people call me Belo." uh yeah, I'm interested to see how this works, uh, the small DC converter. So there is a screw thing on it, so uh, for adjustments, a little tiny pot, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, just, it's, not, uh, it's not flowing grid. Good enough. It's not amazing, but it'll do. Uh, yeah, what is up with this? It's flowing terribly. Let's crank it up a notch. I blame my tools rather than me. Yeah, it does. I I think it was just an auto correct issue now, if I'm being honest, uh, because although it did say below, it also had some weird, like, word afterwards that made no sense. Like it wasn't even a word, so I presume it was just a an issue with like the phone not recognizing lock as a word. Um, so hello to you guys if you're watching this video, um, but yes, now I'm affectionately known as Bilo. <laughs> yeah, JLo has nothing on me. <laughs> uh, you, I could. You, you've never seen. Well, actually, I walked over there earlier, so maybe you did see my butt. Um, 
Why did I take it out of there? It was it was perfectly okay in there. Um, after taking it out of there, and okay, I went back in. Oh, yeah, I actually need to figure out which way is which. Okay, so this is. Let's go that way. So this is. In is on the left, and out is on the right, which makes sense to me. Um, this. Uh, this stream has taken a turn for the worse. Um, okay, let's see. So we'll put our, oh, our little breadboard to uh, breadboard to alligator clip adapters, uh, so we can connect them to our multimeter. <coughs> and then let's get. Multimeter, no. Uh, yeah, you. Um, you. I dropped my. Um, I dropped my. Uh, I'm sorry, my. My camera tripod slid down my desk. It was resting off my desk and slid down my desk and knocked my uh, screwdriver set onto the floor and I'm missing a head. Uh, and I'm not even sure what head I'm missing. So uh, hopefully it's not an important one. So I'm just screwing a male header pin into one of these guys. By multimeter. Turn it back on though in a second. Hey, I giggles. Thanks for the. <laughs> uh, my apologies. Hey, I was just trying to keep up with the Twitch streamers. It's the same on both sides, right? That's in plus, okay. So in plus down there, and out plus up there. Okie dokie, I need to make sure to not burn my wire off the soldering iron. There's a here. Okay, so we have uh, <laughs> uh, I'm struggling not because of a really messy desk, but just there we go. Okay, so that's at 11 volts, and can we adjust it? That is not catching. I need a smaller one. I have a smaller one. Is it? A, is it a Phillips head screwdriver or is it a flat head screwdriver I need? Are they joined DuPont wires or just repaired from solder burns? Um, I joined them. I stripped. I cut a DuPont wire in half and I cut a. Uh, I cut a uh, crocodile wire in half and I stripped the two of them and I soldered them together. Um, this little guy here. Um, is it? Is it, it is a. Uh, MP1584EN. Sorry, I know that's not focus free, but just trust me. Uh, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with the, the TS100. I won't be moving to the TS80 anytime soon. 
Okay, well that's not doing anything. Does anyone know how to adjust these? Oh, here we go. Now we're talking. So I get it down to five volts. That's that's pretty close to five, right? Marco Reps also um, reviewed the. Hey, that's after jumping up to five point one. Um, also reviewed that pace iron as well. I think he liked it. He wasn't mad about the user interface of it or something. It was a pretty positive review, anyways. That seems pretty good. Um, yeah, you see, my my eventual eventual aim. How did that jump down again? Um, my eventual aim is to make this all a PCB, and uh, he seems like a nice candidate for like my built-in book converter, because I would like this to be like available up to you know like why couldn't it be a 19 volt source or whatever like so uh oh that's sacrilege to australia um yeah so he looks like a pretty good candidate for it like just replace the pot with a standard resistor um so yeah let's uh let's see if he'll power an ESP <laughs> before I uh, before I sing its praises too much. Um, so let's get uh, did I take down my I did. Just put it miles away for some reason. Um, I think the software that's on this ESP is just boot looping so That'll be interesting. It mightn't tell me a huge amount if uh, if it doesn't stay on, but uh, it's fine. Let's see that it actually turns on. Um, Bolts in here, ground in here. Hey, thanks, Try Nolt, for the follow. Um, well, it's power in the USB, anyways. Yep, happy enough to give that a go. next on the agenda and Brian's lovely clean desk time my desk was actually relatively clean not that long ago so uh, like even earlier today it was pretty good but uh yeah, we are where we are that's the beauty of live streams I guess just tidy up enough I was, uh, so I bought my TS100 this time last year, and I was really torn between buying a uh, Heiko or the TS100, and in the end, I just went for the TS100 because maybe I should just use this one, um, because uh, it, it was cheaper, it was nice and small, I could take it off and 
you know, move it to my, uh, I could move it into a component drawer when I wasn't using it, so, uh, yeah, that's why I went for that. Uh, okay, it fits in, I'm bending the crap out of the board, but... It's uh, smooth, right? Sure, if it, if it goes in, was it was it the general Heiko that he was getting frustrated about, or was it just the um, the reflow station? I don't watch a huge amount of him, but I remember watching a, a review of. Or a comparison of a cheap Chinese reef or hot air station and the Heiko one, and he was singing the Chinese one's praise. Uh, yeah, sure, look, that works okay. Right. Okay. So we want to swap, yeah, so that's in. And that's out. I gotta shake it all about. Yeah, like the the Heiko. I was looking at the eight A C D or whatever it's called, and it was gonna be like double the price. Um. Too. So that was kind of another uh, another feather in the TS one hundreds cap. Um, will I bend the MOSFET? I guess I'll leave room for him to bend, but maybe I won't bend them. Yeah. Um, Okie dokie. I guess I could move the ESP up one more. It's still kind of within the lines that I drew originally. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, that'll give me room to move my uh, red wire along. <laughs> yeah, gotta sniff that lead. Um, Yeah, I like I had a I had a cheap Chinese one up to um, up to when I bought the TS one hundred and to be honest, it was working okay. It needed a new head at the time. The last major thing I used it for, and uh, that was kind of frustrating. But it wasn't really uh, wasn't really its fault. So um, yeah. Yeah, let's solder this down, I guess. Let's start soldering some stuff. Uh, my TS-100 is gone to sleep. I actually do really like the go-to-sleep functionality of the TS-100. Um, yeah, I... The power cable that I got with it is my biggest issue with it. Um, that it's just too stiff. It's it's literally like a laptop power supply. But um, spoiler alert uh, for a future project. Um, I bought. Um, you can buy like a one of those things called XT60 to uh, XT60 to to point five whatever um dc jack specifically for the ts100 and uh i bought one of those not because i want to use it with a battery although it's maybe at some stage that'd be nice but uh that connection or that um that wire that that's attached to is meant to be quite flexible 
So I was thinking that I could just like plug this power supply into a, a little breakout board or whatever and then with an XT60 connection on it and so basically just use that wire as an extension of the current wire and uh, yeah see how that works out so okay that's that guy pretty much done um, so let's wire Let's plug some stuff into them. Hook up spool wire, or do I want stranded wire? Um, what do I have here? Single core. Um, I might just use stranded or single core wire. So this, which is which? Maybe should have figured this out before I started. Um, Alright, so he's negative. Minus plus. And he's going that way. Nice! What was the source of your uh, bump? That's a lot. Um, it's a huge amount. I'd be, I'd be very happy with that many in a weekend. That'd be pretty rare for me to get that many. Cool. Um, I want a quadcopter, and I. The only reason I don't have one is because I know I'll never use it. I know for a fact I'll never use it. But uh, it doesn't mean I don't want one. But uh, yeah, I don't know where my wire strippers is, so I'm just gonna manually do it. Nice. Good job, Adam Welch. I'm actually not uh, familiar with his stuff at all. But uh, it's, it's great to hear. Um, I'll be giving you a shout out pretty soon. Uh, it's not even, do you know what? It's not even losing it that bothers me. Um, it's not using it. Is that that bothers me a lot more <laughs> than losing it? Um, yeah. All right. So I just have this wire. I'm sure, people are gonna give out to me for this, but that's fine. Um, this red wire is going to one of the screw terminals. I guess I should probably put a plus on that at some stage too, and then the other one is going to the start of my DC to DC converter. You won't use it, at least not as much as you'd like. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, it's just, sometimes you see, like, guys on channels, like, uh, uh, Ivan Miranda, um, is it RC Life on or Simon from? He does a lot of three D printing, but like, man, when he's like flying drones and stuff, it just looks so cool. Like, just I want to be that cool. Um, now, actually, what I what I'd actually like more than a uh, drone, uh, for some reason, is uh, a boat. Um, not a hundred percent sure why, but I just think a boat would be cool. But you're right, I wouldn't use it half enough. And even like my uh, my wife's brother has a um, has a decent enough drone. I can't remember what it is. Is it a parrot or something? Like it's 
you know, not it's not super high end, but it's pretty decent. Um, and like I could borrow that off him, and I just don't. So yeah, I'd never use it. It's <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's even that expensive. Uh, like I saw some pretty nice ones, like or pretty okay looking ones on AliExpress, and they're like thirty or forty euro. Seem alright. Um, but uh, like one thing that I really, l I'm really curious about, and I, I I need to look into it a bit more. I've cut this wire too long, but sure. Better to be looking at long wires than looking for a longer one. Um, is the the receivers? They seem to be pretty cool. Like they just work and are able to control. Um, are able to control like motors just right out of the box or whatever that looks cool uh, uh well you buy a, sh a crap one for that uh i will a hundred percent call it body mac boat face when i get it um i'll even call it david watts's body mac boat face um or the crap boat in honor of David Watts. Um, where is my solder? There it is. Um, yeah. No, there is a flight controller. Okay. Yeah. But still, even that, like, there's a flight controller module that you can just plug into. Uh, I wish I had some blue tack right now. Uh, that there's a flight controller module that you can just plug into motors or whatever. That's that's pretty cool too. Or that it just automatically is able to talk to the talk to the uh, the receiver, remote, sender, whatever it's called. I just haven't looked into it and it looks it looks cool. But uh yeah, uh recently I saw uh that <laughs> that's an idea with legs or a hull. Um yeah, what would the crap boat look like? Would it be like a boat with like arms out the side so it kinda swims rather than uh um I'll take a look at that link in a second, Colin. Is that for a boat? <laughs> Uh, where are we? Yeah, <laughs> trademark crap. Um, I don't think there's a queue of other people looking to take the crap name off David, but maybe. Gotta protect your IP. Uh, Oh, stop spinning. Yeah, looks pretty good. Paddle. Uh, it's a boat, yeah, not quite boaty Mac boat first though. Oh, you remixed one on Thingiverse. Ah, yes, is this the, is this the one that RC, no, he did an airboat, but it was similar to this. I'm not gonna have a CR10. It looks cool though. So did you ever build it? <laughs> you know that somebody made a helium balloon, an ESP8266 powered helium balloon. Uh, Sophie from Hackada. Um, But uh, that's a great idea. Did you ever build a boat, Colin? Oh, I have two holes printed and ready. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that RC Life on. Or what's his name? RC. 
for life on or something something like that he uh, made a, an airboat recently and it was just so cool it just looked like so much fun to drive and yeah as I said I want to be as cool as him someday uh, that sounds kind of exaggerated I, I don't really want to be like him but uh, I, that boat is super cool and I would love it uh, yeah okay Okay, cool. So I have. See ya, David. I <laughs> how this is going probably will be, uh, pink ones. Dave Derrico's big play would do. Yeah, that looks like so long. I, the current printer, I wouldn't trust to print something that long. But we'll see how the new one goes. So so far, I have. Po this is gonna be my incoming. Uh, incoming. Uh, let's put a little plus over here and a minus over here. And the same up here. Plus, minus. Um, and let's draw a little arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got a little. We got our incoming positive here. It's going to the positive of the converter and it's going to the positive of the output so that's fine now let's do some let's do the negative and we also need to do the the MOSFET what is that connected to Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um. Boop 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 boop. Yeah, let's be close. And I put it somewhere that if I wanted to, I could bend it. Looks like I could probably bend it from there. What are you building? Should I use yellow or blue LEDs for a pink PCB? Uh, blue and pink work well together, right? What kind of a blue is it? Because, like, Baby blue and pink work well. Hey, Riff Rider, how's it going? Do you see this man? There's Intel inside. Well, I did work as a intern in Intel once. So maybe it's still written on my face. Uh, yeah. How's it going, anyways? Uh, hey, Cod or. Cado Grenin, Adam, how's it going? Uh, yeah, this is a Wemos D1 Mini, which is based on the ESP uh, A266 12 chip. So, uh, you, uh, the Wemos D1 Mini is like $3 delivered. And I'm dropping a load of frames, but it's back. Um, no, this is an ESP A266. Um, so uh, yeah, it's about three dollars delivered. Has everything you need in terms of like a USB to serial converter, uh, voltage regulator. So like you can just plug it straight into the into the micro USB and start uh, programming. Can I use three D project? I'm not sure what you mean um, by that. Who used it? Uh, Bitlooney used it for some three D processing the last day. Did he? No, he did the three D three D printer. Uh, no, not as far as I know. It doesn't have enough pins really to be used for a three D printer. Um, I would say, like maybe you can use it to kind of interface with an existing three D printer, but uh, I don't know. 
I haven't seen many people do that, so I don't think so. Uh, let's see. No, this is flexible. Oh, uh, flexible. Yeah, it's possible. I've never done anything like that, anyways. Um, so I'm not sure. Let's get that out of my way for the minute because I need to solder here. Um, I cut this way too long, but anyways. Probably be streaming for another half an hour, I would say. Not that much longer. Like I want to go to, I need to go to Dublin tomorrow, so I can't go to bed too late. I'm probably not gonna get this finished though. Um, we'll see. Uh, that would be my estimate though. About half an hour. Resume. You're asking because you're wondering. Can we go to bed? <laughs> you have my permission to go to bed. Oops. Do I have? I also need to work on my blog posts to keep up my one a week. Um, oh, did I not make this long enough? Oh, it's, that's just about long enough. Do I have a switch? Uh, oh, Dying Light. I actually played a bit of Dying Light before. I liked it. Um, do I have a switch? The answer to that question is no, I do not have a switch. Uh, I would have liked one, but I knew I wouldn't have the time to play it so I didn't uh, I didn't get one. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a bit of a jump here, I don't know if you see that. Um which which dying light are you playing? Is it the f is it still the first one or is there a new one or um I'm gonna have to do a bit of a jump here but it'll be it'll be fine. For clicking there, that's yeah, fine. Uh, no, my solder and iron is pretty good. I'm terrible. <laughs> my solder and iron is is the best part about me soldering. I would say uh, the following enhanced edition. I have no idea what edition I played or didn't play. Um, yeah, okay, so that's good. What else do I need? Another piece of black to go to my MOSFET, which I felt was pretty good here, maybe? Yeah, it's good there. Um, at the moment I am mainly playing, so I haven't played anything in a few days anyways, but at the moment I'm mainly playing Overwatch, um, I started playing Rocket League for the first time in about, uh, two years last week, um, Uh, that game is so good, but I hate the people who play it. I hate them so much. They're 
horrible salty people and it's just very frustrating I don't know like I play games to like unwind and stuff and you know relax and not be worried about things and sure you know like you're playing as good as you can and as you start getting better at the game you start getting ranked with people and they're just not nice people and like any shot that's missed or you miss a save and they go crazy on you and then uh what else is there like you go a goal behind and it's like oh forfeit it's like come on it's like four minutes left <laughs> we're one goal behind uh yeah but the game itself so so good uh, a lot of games that I don't play since they don't interest me you're you burning plate I'm not sure what you mean uh, Adam mm. Okay. That should be pretty good there. Let's get blue. Is it? Ah. The that PCB is kinda cheap. Do do I know solder techniques? Well, I can solder things and they normally work. Is that a solder technique? I don't know. Um, I'm not a I'm not a professional solderer or anything. Oh, the black part. Oh yeah, that's that's marker. Uh, just to mark where I'm writing to or where I'm. Putting stuff. Uh, proto. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Do I know any proto techniques? Is it? Oh, sorry. Let's move you up there. This is way too long, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I've been soldering with this thing for a while and it's working out okay for me so far. Uh, I don't think I need flux for this job now, but maybe people would disagree. Uh, what can you see there? So this is just the connection for the output. So it's connected to the to the MOSFET. Um, get myself a new bit of solder so I don't burn myself. Um, let's see. Now. Yes, that's pretty cool looking, but I'm gonna fix it up. I've definitely lost some solder to true the breadboard that's oh, okay it'll do no, that's not so good let's fix that up not looking too bad no it's not moving breadboard no perf board proto board whatever you're called Fringe hit off the camera there, I think. Yeah, 
should do me okay. Flamethrower, <laughs> napalm. That'd be an interesting option. Just like press a button and napalm drops out of your uh, your soldering iron. Uh, yeah, that, that looks generally okay. I would say. Uh, yeah. Let's give myself. Where am I going? I had the mass. Uh, connected to pin D2. Yeah, it's quite a long way around as well. Um, I'm not going to at the moment use flux. I'll just use the flux that's in the solder. Um, yeah. I don't tend to use flux unless something is giving me problems. Uh, I guess I could go in here. I'm gonna wind up out here somewhere. Um. So, what were other people making over the weekend? Um, I think I was talking about what I was doing. Uh, Dave Darko released a video. Uh, it's a very entertaining video, actually. I know you were kind of worried about how long it was, but uh, I, I thought it was good. Um, uh, yeah, post, post it. Post it in the chat. Um, and if you're not familiar with Dave's channel, make sure you check it out. Um, Greg, you um, you released something on Tindy recently as well, didn't you? How's that going for you? Or is I right in saying it's a pretty specialized product? Or I, ca I can't actually remember what it was. Was it a PIC pro or a EEPROM programmer or something like that? Uh, you. Uh, Oh, subtext. Oh, sad. Um, oh, come on, down. Yeah, that would be good enough. Uh, I worked on a 3D printing project using a PCB, doing the PCB layout to match the 3D design as a new experience. Um, you should reach out to Stephen Luggate on Twitter, Chunky Steve. Uh, he does amazing work transferring over. Um, I'm gonna do my safety squints. Um, he does amazing work transferring over um, PCBs into 3D designs. I'm not sure what he uses for it, but it, like it's so good. Um, like the like that's what he used to make the cases for the David Watts BCD clock. And I think he made a case for Sion's uh, seventh segment as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, do 
don't really have any good ideas. Um, sometimes I feel creative and sometimes I do not. Uh, yeah, like sometimes I'm just kind of like repeating what other people have done, maybe adding a little bit to it. Uh, no, um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely mostly inspired by other people. Um, yeah. Yeah, like some things I feel like are kind of unique to me, like the the way home meter or daddy's home or whatever that thing is called that I need to finish at some stage, but I think what I've left to do on it needs to be done off stream. I think that's pretty unique. I haven't seen much like that, but it's no good unless I actually finish the thing, so uh, let's get around to that at some stage. Uh, okay, so that's most stuff done. Let's solder up this here. This is the negative. Yeah, I think mashup artist is probably a good description. I, I think most makers are. Like, I don't know if there are that many people who are like just absolutely changing the game all the time. Uh, People like Bitlooney and stuff, they're they're doing things that, like, I know, well, sometimes Bitlooney does, like, standard enough stuff, but, like, that making the games console, you know, like, that was, like, who else is doing stuff like that? Knoller, or however you pronounce his name, C.N. Knoller, you know. That's definitely pretty unique to uh, pretty unique to him. Charles something lore. I actually thought the C stood for Christian or something. Like Christian being his religion, not his name. Um Okie dokie. Uh, let's drop a solder point onto the other side. I don't need the reset pin. Just to hold it in place. Which one's reset? This one up here. Hey, Milderina, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Mini Pro Wash. Now that my um, now that my daughter's starting to get older as well, uh, like. Making stuff for her is going to be a pretty big inspiration, I would say. Um, or it's going to be a pretty big driver of the stuff I do. Um, let's uh, clean out the holes on the... Uh, Rotary encoder. Colin already sent me a, a cool project that I need to uh, that I need to do.
sucker. That was doing me. Uh, rather than the pins. Uh, let's. So one thing about C and Naller, how do we pronounce that? Um, is some of the stuff he does is so impressive it's not practical, or it's like it's awkward. Um, so say like he he got the boot time of the ESP down to like nothing but like he's he did he write his own custom stack or like i think he might have even been using a custom uh a custom like network protocol or something it was like it's not something you know you can just install a library on the arduino id and <laughs> away you go like technically super impressive and there's probably like people who that's useful for but it's not useful for me <laughs> uh, uh, I'll check out what you're linking to in a second hey and I also like gave uh, a big list of uh, projects my Trello link this is incredibly satisfying I'm not gonna lie seeing the solder like bubble up and then plop But you didn't say before what the project was about. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could, uh, you could build an alarm clock. That's a pretty useful one. Everybody needs an alarm clock, right? Uh, what are other, some other ideas that uh, I don't think I've even made the list yet? Um, I would love a device that, uh, when I got home, it registered how much uh, how much diesel I had left. So if I needed more diesel, it would let me know. It's kind of uh, specific to me, but I uh, thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, okay, so let's wire that in and I'm gonna use single core wire to do it. And one little clamp I guess. Maybe even two little clamps. Yeah, I um that would be one of the features I'd like to get from the alarm clock as well, is uh, that artificial sunrise. But what I'd really like to do is to uh, is to put like a Wi-Fi bulb in the room to make the entire room be the artificial sunrise part of it. It's pretty good there. I can just leave it there. Um, so I guess if I just cut it relatively long. Just push it through here. Bend here. Bend 
up here. I'm kind of hold it in place a bit. Not enough, apparently. Uh, let's bend it back this way. I actually use Raspberry Pis at once. Nice. Um. Well, like, what sort of uh? What kind of stuff are you interested in? Like. You play Dying Light, is there any, do you have any other hobbies or, the, the thing I like doing the most is like, solving a problem, that is the ideal thing to do, that like, one of my first projects was adding a switch, a mechanical, or a telegram bot for uh, my water switch. Um, because that was a problem for me that I wanted to solve. Like that just makes it, uh, that just makes it so much more interesting to me, anyways. Um, well, that's a good start. It means there should be loads of stuff for you to be able to work on. I don't know how straight this is gonna be, you know, when I'm finished, but it doesn't really matter. I just want to get it enough that it's not that. <laughs> you are, yeah. You've got all sorts of interesting things to work on. Um, yeah, I thought um, as well. Like when I was coming into uh, when I was coming into like Arduino stuff. Like, I was kind of in a similar boat, and I felt like working on, um, working on, like, libraries, so, oops, uh, that wrapped APIs was just something that people weren't doing enough of in the Arduino community, and it was just kind of something I felt like I could contribute to. So that's why I did a lot of uh, library work when I first started. It was just kind of something I was more familiar with in comparison to maybe other devs in the Arduino space. Uh, let's move the lot. Oh, I fixed it. That rarely happens. Um, Nerd. Uh, yeah. Uh, the solar is too small. I'm not using this. Um, it's very out of focus and very far away. My apologies. Um, you should have given out to me for now. Uh, I'll be a while waiting for that to melt. It's uh, it's <laughs> the the stripped wire. I'm just glad I uh, realized what it was before I burnt myself. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't think that's uh, weird at all. Moth or something in my room. Oh, Mr. Moth. But I am a nerd, so I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't listen to me. Uh, What do you mean? The barrel here is really long, is it? Mm, I don't know. I 
I don't think it gets too hot up here. Oh no, what I uh yeah, I got what you mean with the chicken. I I picked up a piece of um stripped wire and tried to solder with it. Um yeah, TS or Marco Reps was kind of commenting on that how short of a distance was. I never really found that a problem though. Um I guess before I did have an issue with uh, shaky hand syndrome, but it's not as bad as it was, if it's even a thing anymore. Probably now that we're all looking at that and uh, paying attention, it'll be bad. But uh, um, yeah, like I used to have a really shaky hand solder, and that was even before I was videoing anything. Yeah, I gotcha. Holding parts and tin in one hand. I do not have the fingers for that. My, uh, I've got soft programming hands. If I did that, I would melt myself. I should actually not be soldering. Oh, uh, there's that chicken. Um, I probably shouldn't be soldering these. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just because I need to solder wire to them now. Which, yeah. Doesn't really matter. Maybe I should have just soldered like male pin headers through the top of this but anyways we are where we are Julian Julian has nothing on me when it comes to blue tech I love blue tech um, I should it's just it gets a little bit messy when um Uh, it gets a little bit messy when you're soldering bare wire like this. I really need more blue tech. I really liked uh, the synthesizer you showed in one of your last videos, Dave. I don't think it was your most recent one, but um, I just thought it looked really cool. I liked the idea of them as well. Just, I don't know, making kind of cool sounds out of like cheap stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it was blue. Like, I'm not into, um, I'm not into guitars and stuff, but I really like the idea of uh, pedals, like guitar pedals and stuff. Like, I've made a few, and just, you know, how ch like simple simple as circuits they are to you know two fairly cool things it's uh probably should use that uh it's cool and i know i'm using cool a bazillion times uh okay we're almost out of the Interesting. Oh, I'm probably melting my uh, my cutting mat, but anyways, here we are. Come on, clock. You don't even know. I don't know, like, is 
smart is subjective to like one man's smart is uh, another man's useless like there's tons of things that I know absolutely nothing about does that make me not smart like my wife used to think it was hilarious how little I knew about like animals and farmyard stuff and anything like that you know that's I guess not stuff that's traditionally like oh you, you must be smart to know it but like is in yeah I think uh, I don't know it's sort of it's weird I think you can be smart on certain stuff but I don't think smart is just like an overall like thing that someone can be really right who was giving out to you about your color legends is it is it a not colorblind friendly or something uh, okay cool so uh, where did clock go clock is this purpley one he went to d7 okay it's a pretty short gap use yellow um yeah color blindness is actually um color blindness is actually really common um one in ten men are red green color blind apparently um so there's at the moment there's eleven people is any of you red green colorblind I presume it's just your um, I presume that's just your uh, it's just your diagram that they're complaining about is it I need to actually make this smaller I think yeah maybe yeah I'll leave that for some other time all right if he's that uh cutting wires is my most hated part about making up uh making up boards so you'd think I'd uh just do more pcbs <laughs> I'll uh I'll learn that skill eventually. Yeah, my brother is um is red green colorblind. Um I don't know if he's that bad to for want of a better word, like as in it doesn't seem to impact him hugely. But uh you can't be an electrician. You can't be a pilot. He didn't want to be either of those things, but uh, ugh. this is a bit of a issue here. My one of my pins is going to be right up against the. I'll just cut that now. Pop pop. And funnily enough, that red green colorblind, it's something like one in a thousand female are red green colorblind. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Let's put stickers of uh, farmyard animals on it. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. 
that's that's my vote anyways. That might actually be an interesting like gimmick. You know, the way like Prusa sends gummy bears with their uh, printers. Sion sends child stickers. Uh, I put D5 as the switch. Cow, sheep, horse, chicken, other farm animals. Cow, sheep, horse, chicken, duck. Is duck a farm animal? Sure. Pig. I don't like a pig. Get them to make like a. Get it to be a separate option on. Oh, I already have a green one. Not this matter. Get it to be a separate option on Tindy that if you want colorblind option, you have to pick it. Or request it in the comments. Is there a comment section when you order off Tindy? I presume there is. Like, if you require a colorblind one, please let me know in the comment section. I guess, by a law of averages, one in ten of your customers is going to be colorblind. So. Things in place, solder up those uh, those wires there. It was funny how. Uh, how we found out as well that my brother was color blind, color blind, color blind. Um, does anyone remember the board game Mastermind? It was like there was these coloredy pegs, and there was a person who like set a pattern out, and then the other person would have to put in guesses of patterns with the colored pegs, and like if they used the right color but in the wrong position the mastermind had to kind of mark that as a thing and if they used the right color in the right position the mastermind would have to mark that as a thing and uh, whatever was ha after happening and it was me and my brother were playing and uh, like whatever way the game worked out I was like there's no way that that this works like as in I had I, I was in a situation where I had all the right colors or whatever and I tried them in every single way and he didn't give it to me and I was like what like something's wrong here and basically he was like no you put green there and I was like no that's red and he was like no it's green I was like no it's red and like I I thought he was messing with me and I like called my mam in and I was like look I, I, I was a sore loser as a child I just want to throw that out there um, I was like, look, I got this right, and Matt was saying it's red, and yeah, then we had some encyclopedias or something that had a colorblind test in it, and we gave it to him there and then, and he was like, oh yeah, looks like he's colorblind, like, he's four years older than me, so, like, 
if I was playing Mastermind or whatever, I think he was maybe like 10 or more. So, uh, yeah, he, like, he found out pretty late. And that is the story of the locks. Thought you'd be coming here to learn about electronics and uh, I don't know. You've six things. I don't know. Could you even do just like line, like an amount of lines? You know, like numbers even. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's just red and green, even though it's called red green colorblind. Um, like I know my brother has problems with like brown and stuff, and maybe orange. I'm not sure. We just need to find someone who's colorblind, that that type of colorblind, and we can test out whatever you do on them. Well, like I can ask my brother, but I wouldn't be talking to him every day now or anything. Nope. Hmm, maybe I should be using more flux. say so <laughs> I don't know what it what it is in terms of brown and orange being basically red and green. I yeah if I remember right he had problems with brown anyways. Even though he is that common red green colorblind whatever that's called. I don't know, do you ever wonder though like do we see colors the same? Like, I'm not colorblind, but do I see green the same as you see green? Or, yeah. That's my spacey thought of the day. Uh, okay, so we're nearly ready to turn it on, I think. I don't know. Are we? But I think um, CN wants to like bundle up the stuff ahead of time as much as possible to cut down on the amount of time it takes to uh, prepare the kits. Uh, I this out. Come on. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Did I cut this long enough? Ooh, just about. Take that, but I'll put it aside for the minute because I need a red one or one for orange. I'd normally make it orange, but I don't have any orange wire here. Exactly. It's like, oh, it's the color of, like, my chopping or my cutting board, it's the color of grass. It's like, okay, cool. But, like, do I see grass the same as you see grass? So, I don't know. <laughs> do, 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 do. a bit long but sure it'll do uh. I have some time off work coming up in August I'm hoping to take two weeks off 
Uh, I'll definitely be taking like that time at some stage. I, might, I just mightn't get to take the two weeks in August, but um, I uh, I really want to use like a week of it just to finish off some of these projects because I keep wanting to <laughs> start other ones that I have the stuff here for. Um, like I have the stuff for an infinity mirror and. I would like to make it, but I'm just like, I can't start it unless I finish off some of these other ones. Uh, up at that Dublin maker as well, I met the the fella who um, I got some laser cutting done from. And he was like, oh, how would you get on with that uh, project that was a laser cut for you? And I was like haven't finished it, haven't even started it. Is it Logan Paul? Uh, I I have seen some of them. Yeah. I know Logan Paul had a video. Um, yeah, that's... This is Jake Paul. I think it was Logan Paul was the guy with the glasses, though. I'm a big fan of the Pauls. Uh, Apple, yes. Talk about appalling. <laughs> Oops, did I... Oh, sugar. I cut the wrong side of a pin. Oops. Better put a bit of solder on that. I don't think I actually cut through it. Oh, yeah. It wasn't the wrong side of the pin. That's fine. I'll patch back up anyways. Um... No, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen some. It's pretty interesting, all right. I um. I don't know. It, it, it's kind of weird. Like, as in, of my abilities as a person or whatever. Like, uh, you know, if if you're. If you if I had to rank them, like there's a ton of shit that I would want more than uh, being able to see colors. Hey, the other lone star. Um, I'm just kind of finishing up making uh, an ESP eight two six six Wi-Fi con or LED controller board. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the ESP8266, it's a Wi-Fi Arduino. So I'm just putting this mess into uh, this, <laughs> uh, which is actually coming along quite nicely. Um, so the ESP is going to sit on top here. And yeah, so the only thing I've left to do is a little bit more soldering up. And then I have a capacitor there as well, and then hopefully it'll just work. Uh, I'll be able to take that board from there that's already programmed and put it in here. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, uh, so I've actually two, yeah, so we must do one mini. Um, I've actually two projects that kind of are in need of this board um one is uh grow lights and i know what you think uh uh i know what you're thinking <laughs> it's it's not for that it's actually just for vegetables uh so i bought like these red and blue leds from uh from china for pretty cheap um and uh, I'm gonna burn myself now. Um, and kind of, I made a little frame for them to hang above, like uh, to hang above a little plastic enclosure for plants that my wife has. And uh, this is currently what's powering it. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I want to make it a little bit more solid uh, than that. So it's just a kind of standard LED strip 
uh, except it's got blue and red LEDs on it. And then the other one is just like lights for underneath my kitchen counter. Um, uh, ESP32 board uh, subtix has dual core, more memory, I think. It does have more flash memory, doesn't it? I actually don't know about the flash memory side of things, but I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, I am just going to blob solder across to the negative there. And then the last thing I need to do is do positive and put in my capacitor and I think that's not too bad. Um, yeah, w what I'd like to do at some stage, um, yeah, so that's, what kind of memory, wh what are you looking to do? Subtix, I think is the better question. Um, like an ESP only has like 90k of SRAM. Um, I'll take a look at that in a minute. See you on. A lot of code. Uh, like, you'll fit a huge amount onto the ESP. Like, you know, people build pretty expensive projects. Um, people build pretty expensive projects on uh, on Unos and Nanos and like the ESP has like what five times more SRAM than uh, than them, so it's I'd say you'd be okay. So let's put my capacitor back in this one and that one. Okay, it's a big mess of stuff to solder up here now. Um, the other Lone Star, have you, have you made much stuff with uh, an ESP before? Uh, what kind of things uh, are you into making? I need to bridge it across this gap here. Uh, I suppose I could actually turn the cap leg. Yeah, that'll, that'll work pretty good. So this is to the ground leg of the voltage converter. At least I hope it is. Because that's what I think it is. It's gonna kind of blobby here. Yeah, I should probably do it. It's alright. Um That's true. Lots of stuff. The other current project. Oh, cool. So, do you stream like bots fighting against each other? Is it? Um, that sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> the guy you're hosting is hosting someone else right now. <laughs> that sounds cool. Um, on my last stream, I don't know why I don't have it set up. Actually, uh, I was um. I'd set up um, a Twitch bot to draw on an LED matrix, um, 
so people could send in like commands exclamation mark draw what was it exclamation mark draw and then a coordinate and then the color um uh, unexpected maker in the chat actually extended my original code to add in support for drawing like shapes so lines and rectangles and circles and uh, it actually works quite well I'm hoping to um, I'm hoping t at some stage to do uh, like twitch plays um, twitch plays uh, you know twitch plays drawing on an LED matrix uh, you know that category of twitch where the chat uh, is is doing something interactive on screen but uh yes subtext was head of uh breaking it um but uh, an important <laughs> task nonetheless um but i i feel it's actually a lot more robust <laughs> because like it does need to be super robust to uh to withstand the horde of like general public twitch so uh because like like you are going out to break it but they will absolutely be going out to break it too so uh, let's see is that enough no, that looks generally all right um okay and i think that was it um So I have my input here is going to the voltage converter, both positive and negative. Um, yeah, the chat didn't draw anything inappropriate. That was the most impressive part. It wasn't the like technology behind this. It was uh, that. So the the robots are they Raspberry Pis that are running it, or are you running like a server on your PC communicating with Arduinos or or whatever? Um, my the infrastructure for that drawn thing was I was I was running a Node app on my PC that used WebSockets to talk to an ESP eight two six six. So uh, it worked out pretty good. Uh, it, like it was fast. Like it works as well as anything, I guess. Um, yeah, so that should be powered the ESP. The yeah, yeah, I think we're good to go. Let's hope for no blowy uppy things. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so this is already programmed with this stuff. Oh, really? You're you're doing the ESP is um, you're doing the ESP is um, communicating with the Twitch chat. That's cool because I was thinking about that that would be possible. All right, just because the Twitch chat uses the IRC or whatever, and there is. Like people have done that before, but I've never actually seen anybody do it, so I'd be definitely interested to check that out. So I'll um, I'll definitely follow so I can uh, see what you're up to. Sounds weird, <laughs> but uh, y you know what I mean. Okay, so my input is here. So let's uh, let's test this puppy out. Um. Let's test this puppy out with a proper screwdriver. Where did I put it? Over here. Cool. Yeah, that was something I definitely wanted to check out. It's great to see that you have it working. Oh, what would be interesting to do is have like a <laughs> have like two separate uh, 
two separate like Twitch streams going at the one time and like one person's chat was controlling one of the robots and the other person's chat was controlling the other. Um will do for the minute. Uh it doesn't feel like the most solid connection. But yeah. If it works, it works. Uh, <laughs> Subtex wanted like razor blades and circular saws and stuff. No, that's cool. Uh, okay. Well, BSP turned on anyway, so that's a good start. I don't know if I have any LED strips here. Don't worry guys, I do. Uh, maybe a switch would have been handy, but I guess... There, it's as good a switch as any. Uh. <laughs> yeah. That, I actually, uh, like, I had an idea of doing something kind of similar before. Um, I built a Wi-Fi controlled uh, remote, con Wi-Fi controlled car using like a remote control car and just a cheap motor shield. And uh, yeah, I thought it'd be cool to let a Twitch driver on the circuit or whatever, but uh, a circuit, a, a race course. But um, uh, that's fallen well down my list of uh, to dos. I never know where to put my hand when I'm screwing. Okay. Red to red, black to black. Let's see how we get on. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's the grow light stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the the switch of the rotary encoder, which is super rocky because of the MOSFET legs, I have to cut that. Um, pushing that in, uh, pushing that in. Um, turns them on and then twisting the rotary encoder feels like the opposite way than I would expect. Is that right? It does, it feels like the opposite way than I would expect. Oh, because, oh you see, normally it was... No, <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, well, I can change that in code anyways, but uh, yeah, so twisting it clockwise is turning it down, and anti-clockwise is turning it up. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that this has, which is quite nice... Hey, thanks, uh, thanks to the other Lonester, appreciate that. Uh, I'll, I'll return the favor afterwards, uh, because your stream does sound really cool. Um, and that's not just uh, returning the favor for uh, <laughs> for r returning the favor's sake. Uh, it does sound very interesting. Uh, yeah, the other thing that this has that I can't demonstrate here is um, it has Alexa integration. Uh, Alexa is in my kitchen, so I can't do anything about that now. But um, so yeah, I can say Alexa, turn switch one on, and it'll turn this on. Um, so like you can name it something other than uh, uh, you can name it something other than switch one that was just like default code that's stuck with it but yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with this now um, so to turn it into a board what I would like to do is um, 
I would like to have uh, at least three MOSFETs. Um, so, like, if someone had an RGB uh, LED strip, that that would. Uh... Alexa! <laughs> Is that a more German way? <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, there is a button there. Lone Star is added to my auto host, and I'm also gonna follow him. Uh, so thank you. Ooh, I really like all your uh, your um, like your layout stuff. I, I really need to do that. Um, ooh, and you've got uh, you've got a bot automatically saying thanks for the follow. That's that's cool. <laughs> um, no, this this LED strip came from China, <laughs> um, as far as I remember. Yeah, no, it definitely did. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'd like to have three MOSFETs, um, because, like, I have maybe even four. I think, why wouldn't I do four? Um, because I have uh, one, two, three, I have four proper ESP pins left over uh, like not being used at the moment I have D0 which also isn't being used but you can't do PWM on that uh, there is no Radio Shack in Ireland, no, but we did have Maplin for a while but they're now closed, it was pretty similar to Radio Shack I don't know if it actually had any Radio Shack branded stuff or anything though um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. I I I also need to figure out the, like, the, book converter, as well. Um, like so, I just used I don't know one of these boards. Um, I would need to. Uh, I would need to like emulate this on a PCB. It should be fine. There's not a lot of components there, but there is some. Like, there's a few really small components there. So there's like what? There's five resistors on the board. A couple of big caps. It's probably a diode. I presume that's another cap. Of some description, maybe. Maybe it's a fuse or something. I don't know. And then another cap down here, and then the pot. But I'd be replacing the pot with whichever, uh, whichever the, um, whichever resistance value gives me, uh, 5 volts. So, like, as far as I know, with most book converters anyways, it doesn't matter what the input is. The output, uh, will, will still be the same if your resistor values are the same. Now, I need to verify that. So what I'd like is, so this board now, when you plug in the power, the ESP is powered by it. Um, the, the, with normal book converters, anyways, I'm not sure about this little small one. Like, I would be able to plug in like 24 volts into this, and that would be fine too. Um, so, yeah. That'd be pretty interesting. Um, someone just suggested I do a foot. <laughs> I I'd, I'd watch it. <laughs> I want candy. Bump 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 bump. Um, yeah. So I think that's pretty good. I think we're. I'll probably bend this MOSFET a bit just to. Uh, so it's lower down than uh, lower down than some of the other components. So if I did actually want to put this in a box, I could. Uh, my cat is trying to get through my blinds at the moment. Oh, he's walking across my desk. I say hi to the cat. He can't go anywhere else, so might as well. Where's my cat? I'm gonna kick him out and uh, actually I'm just gonna finish up too because uh, we're kinda all done anyways. Um so uh yeah, thanks 
pretty much everyone for joining. I know some of you Europeans, it's pretty late. Um, appreciate it. I have a cat and two dogs. Uh, the blonde colored dog that you see in the last day and the cat, they like try to kill each other. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. Not too much issues. Uh, yeah, cool. I'll uh, talk to you all again. Make sure to check out uh, the other Lone Star. His channel sounds really interesting. So um, definitely do that. And I will see you next time. So Saturday morning will be good to stream again. I'm sorry I missed last Saturday. But uh, yeah, cool. Uh, the next project. I'm not actually 100% sure what the next project will be. I normally do a lot around the ESP8266. So it'll probably be something around that again. But what it is, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, Saturday morning is the next one. Probably be too early for most people. But uh, yeah, and every Monday night then at this time. Okay, cool guys. I'll talk to you again. Bye bye.